Hello, the Honorable Minister Chiroma. How are you doing today, sir? By the grace of Allah, I'm doing fine. Oh, that is wonderful. This is, uh, I sp I've spoken with you before, uh, some time ago. Uh, my name is uh, Chris, uh, Chris Forbany, the publisher of the Cameroon Journal. My pleasure for having you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I always appreciate you at uh, this mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, uh, I understand that the government of Cameroon is trying to put together a conference for the Cameroon diaspora. Is that true? Yes, it is. It, uh, it has to take place as early as tomorrow morning, and it will last 48 hours. Oh. Well, the problem, I don't know. I'm not at the helm uh, of the organization. But uh, I am invited tomorrow by 11 o'clock Cameroon time to be part of the ceremony which will inaugurate the meeting which uh, collects all the diasporas, Cameroonian living abroad, who are willing to join, come listen, and, uh, and to put into uh, their contribution in, uh, in action to, to, to form a momentum in terms of... Uh, investment in them of in all aspects of our life of, of our uh, uh living togetherness okay. so, uh, uh, that means the the conference wasn't called by the government it was called by a private initiative no this is not a private initiative i think that uh, the minister of uh, external affairs the minister Mbella, is at the helm is the one who will preside over the inauguration of this and the closing ceremony too. And uh, this is what I can tell you, but uh, many Cameroonians of the diaspora have already had opportunity to be uh, to join the many committees put set up in in place in order to 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 examine all the positive aspects which will include uh, diaspora in terms of investment, in terms of, uh, of uh, all aspects, as I said, investment, if uh, you have an uh, enterprises, uh, road building, uh, the, 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 the building of uh, houses, uh, in, in short, in all aspects of our development, all of them are, are invited to join. So basically, it is like an economic forum, not necessarily a forum to look into the political problems uh, in Cameroon. According to my understanding, at least uh, for the time being, even if this aspect is to be addressed, the major issue which are going to be raised, but this does not exclude other, other, other items in the agenda. The economic aspect will be privileged, but as I said, not having the agenda, all the item in the agenda, I do not exclude the possibility of uh, of uh, inserting um, political issues. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Uh, Chiroba, I know earlier at uh, the beginning of the uh, political crisis with the Anglophones, the government had ruled out. Uh, discussing federation. I know you personally have said federation is not on the table. Is that the way the government of Cameroon is still thinking about that? No, not at all, my friend. The problem, Anglophone problems, I think that they have received the due care, due treatment. I always, whenever I have to speak on behalf of the government, I continue, I keep always saying the same thing. All the issues that you have in your heart, no issue is taboo, provided that there is a provision in our constitution which allows us, which enables us to examine the issue that we are going to raise. We cannot, as far as the government is concerned, we cannot address an issue which is forbidden by the Constitution. 
understand me and understand those who are at the helm today. But in case this is your concern, you can raise the issue too, no problem. But if we have the answer, if the government has the right answer, you will receive it. If there is no satisfactory answer, you will receive it too. So if, uh, uh, assuming that the Federation does not feature in the Constitution, as you are trying to say, uh, what is the government thinking, or what does the government have on the table right now to resolve this crisis? In the way that, the way, the way that is satisfactory to Anglophones. Well, the problem is being addressed satisfactorily, I think, because um, the negotiation is not over, the discussion is not over. It will continue for as long as it is necessary, and common solutions found by those who round the table would examine each of them making a concrete and workable solution to any problems. But so uh, this is the way to tell you that the, the doors are re remains always opened. But the problem is that, uh, sir, Anglophones are saying that the only leaders they have who can discuss or sit on table with government and discuss this issue are the leaders you have in jail. Uh, how can you keep on holding them in jail and then talking about the solution to this crisis? You see, we are a law-abiding nation. When people are caught red-handed, burning, defaming, uh, 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 exercising violence against a citizen, the responsibility of all states in the world, and Cameroon state in particular, the government in particular, is to protect the physical integrity, the well-being, the, 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 uh, this is the responsibility of the government. All of those who today, who are uh, at odd with our souls, with the justice, all of them have been arrested and, broke, and, and brought to the book. And they will face, according to my understanding, to my understanding, but I might be wrong, but according to my understanding, what they did was wrong with respect to the law. And because nobody is above the law, happen what may, they have to face the consequences of their actions. Yeah. But once again, I want you to understand that I am discussing with you uh, with no consultation with uh, my boss here and there. And I, I, I am taking the liberty to discuss with my uh, fellow citizen uh, and companion who is in the United States. I, 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 so, sir, are you really saying that, uh, Barrister Agobala, Dr. Fontaine Neba, uh, Anya Paul, uh, and, and uh, I mean, these, just these three, are you saying that these people were caught committing us, as you put it, in the country, I mean, somebody like Anyapo, for instance, has not even been charged with any crime since he was arrested. Well, as far as those who have been arrested, put in jail, not being charged, they are not charged for the time being, but for sure, the government or the police security, those who are in, in charge of investigation, they have already collected enough uh, um, undeniable proof to keep them in jail. But in case there is nothing against them, they will be released. No doubt about it. Well, but uh, doesn't common law, because you understand their jurisdiction is under common law, doesn't common law suggest that they be held uh, free or not guilty until proven guilty? I mean, how can you have them in jail for all this time? Again, I go back to the case of Ayapo. He has been arrested, he's been in jail for over two months now, I guess, and not even taken to court for one. So what kind of evidence do you have against him and yet you can't take him to court? I would like you, please, my friend, my brother, 
whatever is being done by the government, any action taken by the government is done or are done in accordance with the rule and regulation of laws. It is impossible, as far as the government is concerned, to take any measure or to take any action which is not in accordance, which, which is not enshrined in our constitution or the laws of our nation. Believe me. Do you watch uh, the Southern Cameroon broadca Broadcasting uh, Television, sir? <laughs> this is provocation. <laughs> I can, I can, <laughs> I can be provocation. I did. I, I, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's so it's there. What is provocative about it, sir? <laughs> as a spokesperson of the government, you invite me to watch. Now to watch the video. Let us be serious, and uh, please don't ask me to watch such a television, such a show, because because I will be blamed for 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 giving room or uh, to be maybe a kind of leverage that you can use to promote a wrong idea, unlawful idea. No, don't ask me to watch this TV, please. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> You can, you, can, you can watch it and swallow what you get from it without necessarily promoting what you get. No, I will never swallow the, what I cannot digest, you see. <laughs> well, uh, listen, I don't really want you to, 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 to tell me what the government thinks about Federation now. Is the government thinking of considering discussions on the subject of Federation? Um, you see, the responsibility of the head of state is to see to it that the laws, including all the provisions enshrined in our constitution, are rightfully, duly implemented. This is the responsibility of the head of state and consequently his collaborators. Don't ask the head of state to give way or to spend time in discussion which is forbidden by the law. But within the framework of uh, the team put in place by the Prime Minister, whenever you raise such an issue, the answer is always the same. The government responsibility is the respect of the law, the implementation of the law. Don't ask any government representative in any discretion, no matter where it takes place, to be unlawful at any given moment, at any given time. Please. Are you, are you, are you surprised so this, that this crisis have dragged for so long? Are you surprised that uh, it has taken so long? Uh, because I don't think from the beginning you expected this crisis to drag on for so long. And many people have said it is, uh, you people misconstrued the whole thing. You didn't expect it to go this long, and you're kind of regretting it right now. Are you surprised that it has gone on for this long? The government would have wished it never to take place. And when it takes place, to be as short as possible. It is unfortunate and deplorable when you are dealing with very intelligent, knowledgeable, talented people, knowing the laws, all the provision in this domain, and to continue to remain as a stubborn and adamant as most of them are today. Because what is the purpose? We have to be 
the law abiding nation, the law abiding people. When you start out of this framework, you become, you observe the lawlessness, and which is completely wrong. Unfortunately, it is dragging, it is, well, very, very long, very long. I wish it never to take place, but when it takes place, not to last for, for such a long time. So, uh, what do you think the government is responsible for making it, uh, dragging it so long? Take, let me give you a very practical example. When the lawyers in, in the southwest and northwest uh, started this crisis, their wigs and their gowns were confiscated from them by gendarmes and police officers. And up to the moment we are speaking, not even the government has said, hey, return their wigs, return their gowns. No, I, mean, I, I mean, that is the barest minimum that you can expect. Not even that. Talk less of addressing the top issues that uh, the teachers and the lawyers raise. Well, <clears throat> um, why do you want me to make a comment? Well, because uh, the, 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 you, you have said that been you have said that you are prepared. That been don't 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 ask me to look backwards. Invite me to look forward. Well, so I'm talking in when terms of I'm talking in terms of solution because only solutions will bring the crisis to an end. And if there are crises and you don't sort out solutions then you can look forward. Well, um, when there is a, in English you say, when there is will, there is way. Please, why don't you want to, 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 to continue this discussion in French? Because I know that we are perfectly fluent in both languages, French and English. I don't speak French. No. You speak French. I am convinced. I I, 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 I hated I hated French uh, when I was in school because I saw it as a colonial language. Well, well, I think that you are perfectly wrong. Living in a nation where both languages of equal importance are spoken, responsibility as an elite. You are an elite in this nation. To be fluent in both languages, this is a beauty. It is a must. As you know, I am a Francophone, but I try to express myself in English. I try to be understood in English, no matter how imperfect it might be. You do such an excellent job communicating in, in, in English, and I, and I really praise you for that. Unfortunately, uh, when you are a government official, it, the burden is yours to express yourself in the way that your message is understood, isn't it? Yes. You see, this is in my capacity as the spokesperson of the government. I made it the point of honor um, to try to be um, understood in both languages, no matter how difficult it might be at any given time. Cameroonian know that I am, I am good, if not perfect in French. But as far as the English is concerned, this is, this is my asset. I made it a point of order to learn alone and to be capable of communicating in English. And I am grateful the Lord enabled me to do it. Yes. So, but <laughs> when I, I really understand you, but uh, the question you have just raised about we doing this communication in, in French uh, goes back to the fundamental problem, one of the fundamental problems that Anglophones are talking about. For, for instance, you understand that I am Anglophone, I speak English, and we are in the conversation, and you want us to switch it to French. Why not? Because you are Cameroonian. When you are Cameroonian, you have to prove that you deserve to be called Cameroonian wherever you are. So express yourself in both languages not because i uh, not not because of the ability to speak in french though is that no alors écoute écoutez parlons un peu en français 
C'est très bien que vous comprenez très bien français. Je sais, I know it because all the elite, anglophone elite, they are fluent in both languages. And this is really, really, you deserve to be praised for that. We francophones, we are too much lazy. But things are changing. Things are changing. Okay. I always... Re, re, um, we things are, are, are changing. In my family, I have three daughters. All of them are fluent in both languages. You cannot imagine. All of them are fluent in both languages, French and English. Let me even tell you that I have two daughters who are settled where you are, who are settled in the United States. Okay. And this is an indication that, yeah, this is an indication that um, tomorrow our, our kids and our, our grandkids, most of them will be more anglophone than francophone. And this is, this is the change which is taking place in this marvelous nation that we call Cameroon. Language will never be a barrier, never be. It is today, but my, as my generation is, is, is getting out, and the next one is about to, 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 to fill the gap, then this nation will become what all of us we wish it to be, fluent in both languages, both culture, and this will be a marvelous Cameroon we dream of. Well, uh, it, it, it will be a good vision. The only problem is Anglophones have all along taken, uh, taken the idea honestly, but on, uh, on the French side, they haven't been honest uh, when it comes to uh, issues of uh, bilingualism. It is like in Cameroon, bilingualism means uh, an English person must speak French. It has not always been a French person must speak English. I visited Cameroon, for example, so let me give you an example. I visited Cameroon last year, and I was in the car driving up to Boya, and I got stopped on the highway uh, by the gendarmes. And the gendarmes, they uh, uh, communicated to me in French, and they wanted me to speak in French, and I told them, I don't understand French, and honestly, I can't speak French. So I told them I don't understand French, and they insisted I must speak in French for them to serve me, for them to, 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 to serve me. And I said to them, I don't understand French. I told them the burden is their own, not that of a pedestrian. The burden is their own. In fact, you told me that Cameroon is a bilingual country. I said it is true, but the burden is on the government official to be able to communicate instructions to the citizen in the way you understand. So you see, the problem with the bilingualism in Cameroon is that, is that uh, the Francophone wants an Anglophone to speak French, but the, but the Francophone is not ready to, uh, to speak English, except intellectuals like you would know the benefit of it. I agree with you at, um, at the beginning. Uh, my my father's and uh, elder generation, all the description you made was right. But as far as this government is concerned, the awareness is huge. Yes. Huge. And the government is is taking profit advantage of this crisis. You cannot imagine the benefit we are harvesting from it. It is it is. It is wonderful. You cannot imagine. I agree with you that uh, Francophone, we have to make a lot of effort, a lot of, of effort, huge effort. I agree with you. When you meet Gandharm, who could not express themselves in, uh, in, in English, it is wrong, but I agree with you. But I, I preach, I champion the, the idea of tolerance. You are a manager. You are a leader. You have to understand. Be patient and tolerant. Understand? The guy in, 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 in front of you, who was supposed to be fluent in both languages, unfortunately, cannot. You see? But this, this, this is a matter of, uh, of time. This problem is going to be settled. Please, one second, please. One second. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Okay.